Thank you, Secretary Favila, for your introduction. Um, thank you also, President Andaya and the other officers of the Rural Bankers Association of the Philippines for inviting me to be here with you today. I'd like to greet also um, President of PDIC, President Nograles. I hope you don't have too many clients from the rural banking system. And Hilda Pico, President of the Landmark, I, I hope you have many, many clients from the rural banking system. <coughs> All other officers and members of the Rural Bankers Association of the Philippines, Yes, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. First of all, happy anniversary to all of you. And second, as uh, President Andaya said, mentioned, congratulations for helping the Philippines to be number three in having the best microfinance system in the world and number one in Asia. And of course, through you, I thank the whole banking sector for your efforts to make your services available to your clients, even at the height of typhoons on Doi and Peping. And I thank your association for your donation. I believe especially to the flood victims of Rizal, which is the worst hit province of all in this past typhoon on Doi. I have also my own pride in helping to strengthen the rural banking system to what it is today. Because when I was a senator, I was the principal author of the law that helped to rehabilitate and strengthen the rural banking system of the Philippines. <laughs> and now here we are. Uh, in what we hope is the tail end of a global economic crisis, also in what we hope is the tail end of a, of a once-in-a-lifetime calamity, and with your support, we will continue to work aggressively to ensure that our economic growth that has been generating jobs and revenue to invest in new infrastructure and critical social programs will be sustained. With your support, we will continue our economic resiliency plan and its important components like the conditional cash transfers to the poorest of the poor. We hope that these poorest of the poor to whom we give allowances, as long as they send their children to school, and avail of um, rural health services will soon graduate from extreme poverty. Kaya ang tawag pantawid pamilya. Sana makatawid sila para sa umabot sa kalagayan na pag-iisipan nila na nila magnegosyo at humiram sa mga rural banks. And here in this uh, response to the calamity, through the support of all levels of government and the hard work of our people, both you and your clients, we will not be deterred in our effort to maintain growth. We will intensify our investment in infrastructure, especially shovel-ready repair and rehabilitation. Right now, three things need to be done. Garbage collection, draining of flooded areas, and cash for work for the thousands displaced by Ondoy and Peping, initially in helping clean and repair the roads. And for this purpose, we will continue our comprehensive livelihood and emergency employment program. Going into the more medium term, but we have to begin now. In fact, we started yesterday. We do not want to return the evacuees who came from the endangered areas. They have been living in the creek sides, river sides, lake shores for decades now. And therefore, it's been a Herculean job for the local governments to convince them to stay out of those 
or get out of those endangered areas. But now that many of them did, this is the opportunity to make sure they don't return. But the way to do that is to make sure that they have relocation sites. And that is what we have been doing. We will be having a meeting again of the NDCC on Tuesday, and we will be having a report on this. But in the meantime, yesterday, the first batch of evacuees who will now be relocated, and these are evacuees from Marikina, moved to Santa Rosa. And I will be visiting them tomorrow to make sure that they are well on their way to a new life. And we are continuing to do this, and this is in fact the most important step that we have to take after the cleanup and the draining. But we, we work with you, the private sector, in the meantime, because they need to have a new life, to ensure that there is capital for our micro and SMEs to keep operating or even expand, and also to ensure public-private sector partnerships. And to make it easier for you to participate in rebuilding broken lives, but also in continuing to build up the lives that were not broken. In this regard, the Banco Central, where Peter Favila is a member of the board representing the national government, the Banco Central has decided to keep the key policy rates unchanged rather than raising them to avert an inflationary pressure. And as providers of banking services, to the base of the economic pyramid, which is your theme. You play a key role as the primary conduit of funds to micro and small businesses and small farmers. And this indeed is an important component of the resiliency that we have been able to show during this global economic crisis. Because during this crisis, Although all economies have felt the pain of the global recession, that pain has not been evenly distributed. For instance, in Asia, the economies that have been performing best and that are still enjoying positive growth and not negative are those emerging markets where consumption is a high proportion of GDP rather than exports. The Philippines has domestic private consumption, 70% of GDP. Indonesia and Vietnam, 65%, so with Sri Lanka. Bangladesh, 75%, even though it's very poor. But because of the strong domestic consumption of these countries with large population, they have been keeping the economies afloat, and these economies are outperforming the trade-dependent economies. 